I want to, for a moment, talk a little bit about the mission of education and how we're doing in that regard. So, you know, what is the mission of education? Well, if you peruse some of the websites of public institutions, private institutions, K-12, higher ed, even the Department of Ed, you're going to see things like promoting student achievement, preparing our citizens to be competitive in the global economy, preparing students for post-secondary education, preparing our children for life in the 21st century. I like this one. The crucial task of education is to teach kids how to learn, to lead them to want to learn, to nurture curiosity, to encourage wonder and instill confidence so that later on they'll have the tools for finding answers. So these are all some great missions and I think that it, it encompasses a lot of what education is about and there's more as well, uh, but the real vital question is are we succeeding? And there is uh, unfortunately some sobering statistics that say not nearly to the degree we would like to. Today in America, the intergenerational transmission of poverty is at its highest ever. If you're born poor in this country, you're more likely than ever to die poor. And we're on a path to turn out the first generation of citizens that are not more educated than the prior generation. And this is not something that just affects the, the, the lower classes. This is all across the board. So uh, this is a slide I grabbed. I saw a presentation recently from the president of the APSCU. And in it, he was showing how from the mid-50s up to about 1979, across the entire spectrum of earnings, the average annual income gains were between about 7 and 10%. From 1979, for the quarter century that followed, that was not the case at all. You can see roughly 80% did 1% or less in average annual income gains. The top fifth, maybe about 3%, and the top 1% did well. So our earnings are down. And meanwhile, the growth, the rate of growth of getting these credentials from higher education is diminishing. Half of all students that start in college don't get any kind of credential. So here we see this relationship, and we know there certainly is a relationship between getting those credentials and our earnings. Here's some statistics from the Bureau of Labor Statistics last year showing the relationship between the unemployment rate and median weekly earnings depending upon the level of degree you get. And as uh, Gene Wade mentioned this morning, if we see high school diploma, for example, with about an 8.3% unemployment rate in 2012 and a an median earn earnings of about $652 a week, if you go up to the bachelor's degree level, about half the unemployment rate and about twice the earnings and so on up the scale. So there is this very much a direct relationship. We have to prepare students for the workplace of tomorrow. It's a fundamental goal of education. There's all kinds of predictions out there talking about the numbers of jobs we're going to be creating in the coming decade. So up to 55 million new jobs, uh, 23 million new jobs, 32 million replacement jobs, 65% of them requiring a post-secondary education, 85% of them requiring of the new jobs requiring post-secondary education. And the meanwhile, there's a skills gap. Today, there's 3 million jobs vacant due to lack of skilled applicants, 13 million unemployed, 23 million underemployed, and 37% of small businesses saying they can't hire qualified people. Now, these predictions of what's to come are supported by other studies as well. So the, Mc the McKinsey Global Institute recently predicted there would be a shortage of 1.5 million college graduates in the workforce in 2020. And meanwhile, there's a capacity gap. We can't keep up with the demand to increase education at the rate it needs to increase. So why is all this happening? Well, there's some factors that are pretty easy to discuss a bit. Cost is certainly a huge one. You know, we see more and more of these articles talking about a college degree may not be worth it. Uh, and that's, you know, if you're in our business, that's a scary thing to have people thinking. And there's some truth to it. Some degrees, it, you can show that it's a, it's a struggle for uh, the value you get. But the meanwhile, as we've seen from the other slide, you know, across the board in general, those degrees are going to really help you, your earnings potential. But when we look at costs, we have this other issue. I mean, here's EduCause, you know, all about education, and they did a study not too long ago in which they concluded that there were a lot of challenges, and I'm, this one quote stood out where they said, top institutions have chosen to maintain and increase quality largely by spending more, not by increasing efficiency and not by reducing costs. So the whole cost cycle is a big problem, and tech can play a role in helping to alleviate that. Another big challenge is availability and convenience. So we see a lot of discussion about the disruptive nature of online education. And for the large part, it's been a relatively positive disruption. But uh, meeting the needs of convenience and availability for working adults is a huge situation. And it can apply as well to younger students. 
Preparation is a big issue. Students are coming in inadequately prepared. Here's a recent article from uh, just last month talking about thousands of high school grads underprepared for college in California, and you can find lots of material like, along these lines. We know that students are coming in needing a lot of remedial help and needing to catch up. Then on the other side of the coin is persistence. All right, graduation rates are decreasing. People are not, they're not getting through the process. And as I discussed in an earlier slide, about 50% of students start college and don't ultimately complete a credential. You throw in other things like the, the need for better differentiation, personalization, self-paced learning. Uh, there's a lot of things we're kind of falling short on. But in the meanwhile, there's all these information technologies out there, and there's a growing body of empirical evidence saying these things can work. When they're applied methodically and, when, and, and with care, they can absolutely work. So again, the evidence keeps growing. And I hope that leaves you saying, tell me more. <laughs>